Welcome to Remote Calculus class. Today we're going to focus on an introduction to implicit differentiation. In this episode of Remote Calculus, we will be doing an applied example of implicit differentiation. As always with implicit differentiation, you're finding a derivative, which means you're finding a formula for rate of change or instantaneous slope. It's implicit when the variables are blended together in the formula. It is not solved explicitly for one formula, one variable or the other. In this case, we have a formula for wind chill. We have the wind chill set equal to negative 18 Celsius, which is approximately zero degrees Fahrenheit. And this is a fairly simple formula for wind chill. If you get on meteorology sites, you'll find more involved formulas that have more variables but ours involves temperature in Celsius as X and wind chill or wind speed in kilometers per hour for Y. The two variables affect each other in order to keep it equal to negative 18. As you change one, the other one changes. So one of the variables has to be looked at as a function of the other. So we're going to go with Y being a function of X. And so when we start our work, and we're looking at this formula, we're still going to follow all the same rules of derivatives that we always have, but we're going to remember that y is a function of x. And I will replace y with f of x in the formula for starters just to make sure that I remember. So negative 18 equals 13.12 plus 0.6215x minus 11.37 times f of x, and that's raised to the 0.16 power, and then plus 0.3965x, and then y is a function of x, and that's raised to the 0.16 power. So that's what I'm going to um, work with for starters. Now following all the rules of derivatives, the derivative of a constant is zero, so that side turns into zero. The derivative of 13.12 is also zero because it's a constant. Um, the derivative of this term, it's a linear term and the slope is 0.6215. So the derivative is 0.6215. Um, this term has my y in it. And so notice it's f of x raised to the 0.16 power. Following the power rule, I will multiply by the 0.16 and then um, f of x is now raised to the negative 0.84 where I got negative 0.84 is following the power rule. 0.16 minus 1 is going to equal negative 0.84 and then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so I'm multiplying by f prime because there's a function inside of that power. And the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now this next term is a product. I have 0.3965x times f of x to the 0.16. So I've got this product. So I need to follow the product rule. So the derivative of the product of a, a product rule derivative says you leave one function alone. So 0.3965 times x is going to get left alone. And then I multiply by the derivative of the other function. So I'm going to multiply by 0.16 times f of x to the negative 0.84. Then the chain rule says take the derivative of the inside function. Then completing the product rule, I then take the derivative of the 0.3965x, which is going to be 0.3965, and then I leave the other function alone. Okay, so I get all of this as part of the derivative due to the product rule. So I have first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. At this point, I will replace the f of x's with y, except the f prime. I'll leave f prime because we know we're trying to solve for that. So we have 0 equals 0.6215 minus, and if I multiply together the 11.37 and the 0.16, I get 1.8192. 
So I get negative 1.8192, and then it's y to the negative 0.84, and then I'm going to leave that as f prime. And then um, we have the 0.3965 multiplied by 0.16, I get 0 0.06344, and then we have x, and we have y to the negative 0.84 times f prime. And then we have that last term there, which um, doesn't, doesn't, change. I'm just going to rewrite it as 0.3965 y to the 0.16. Okay, so we are trying to solve for f prime, so you want to identify all the terms that have f prime in it. That's these two terms. And so any term that does not have f prime, we will move to the other side. So negative 0.6215 minus 0.3965 y to the 0.16 is equal to negative 1.8192 y to the negative 0.84 f prime of x plus 0.06344 x y to the negative 0.84 f prime of x. Okay, we did all that so that we could factor out that f prime and once I get f prime factored out, I will be able to solve for it. I'll be able to get it all by itself. And on this side, we still have the same thing. All right, so now last step, I'm gonna divide both sides by um, what's multiplying the f prime. So I get negative 0.6215 minus 0.3965y to the 0.16. That's all divided by negative 1.8192y to the negative 0.84 plus 0.06344xy to the negative 0.84. And there is my formula for the derivative of that windshield function. So at any point, I could plug in the combination of temperature and wind speed, and I would get how the wind speed is changing with respect to the temperature changing. So for example, we had the point negative 10 for temperature and 20.0 or 20.7 kilometers per hour for wind speed. If I put those two values in, if I put negative 10 in for x, and if I put 20.7 in for y, and again this is degrees Celsius, you end up getting a value of the derivative. And actually, this, well, I'll, I'll leave it as that. You get a value of the derivative of 6.573, I guess 7.4 if you round. Um, and the units are the units of y, which were kilometers per hour, per units of x, which were degrees Celsius. So if, so what's happening the wind chill was set equal to negative 18 Celsius. And so at that point, if the temperature is increasing by one degree, then this wind speed would have to increase by 6.574 kilometers per hour to maintain a wind chill of negative 18 Celsius. That's what's happening at that point. Um, have a good rest of your day.